The Greek islands are a beautiful destination, but what's it like to cruise around them? Well, I've got a week doing just that. I'm traveling around some of them to give you an impression of what it's like, from quaint harbors, vibrant old towns, to delicious food and even a bit of history. I'm traveling on the Morella Explorer and I'll give you a bit of a taste of what it's like to cruise on her too. So grab a cocktail or a glass of ouzo or whatever takes your fancy. Sit back and relax and let me show you a Greek island cruise. So I am back on Morella Cruises and this time I'm on the Explorer, which was originally launched as the Celebrity Galaxy for Celebrity Cruises back in 1996. I boarded the ship in Corfu and after an evening departure, the first day was a sea day, giving me the perfect opportunity to explore the ship. So let me show you around. Starting in the central atrium, you find the main reception desk on deck 5. Upstairs to deck 6, there is the coffee port, which sells a range of hot and iced coffee drinks, as well as some cakes too. One deck up, you find the Broad Street Shops, which is the ship's shopping offering. Further up and around the atrium, you can find the attic too. Perfect if you want a bit of quiet space or time to relax with a book. Up on the outside deck, the ship has two pools and the number of hot tubs for you to relax in and cool off on a hot day. There's also a very nice spa on board and a small gym too. In terms of food, the ship has a few specialty restaurants. You'll pay an extra charge to eat here, but they are nice and I'd say worth the extra cost. Starting with the Surf and Surf Steakhouse, which as its name suggests, is the place to go for a nice steak. Next to that is Korola, the Pan-Asian restaurant on board. There's also the Dining Club, located down on Deck 5, which offers a fine dining experience, and not forgetting Umi Sushi on Deck 7. You've also got the main dining rooms as well as the buffet, which are both included in the cruise fur at no extra cost. Now, if you fancy a drink, you have the Squid and Anchor, the main bar on board. Next to the main restaurant is Bar 53, perfect for a pre-dinner drink. Upstairs on deck 11 is Indigo, which is a cocktail bar which then turns into the ship's nightclub in the evening. You'll find a section with some casino tables here too. There's the lounge bar on deck 6 which has nightly live music, and the ship also has a theatre which hosts a range of shows and entertainment acts. So plenty on offer for a week's cruise. Good morning. Okay, so today is the first destination of the trip and it is the picture perfect island of Santorini. So let's go and take a look. Santorini is often top of the list of people's mostly Greek destinations. The volcanic island is home to whitewashed buildings clinging to its steep cliffs and is a popular spot for tourists. Now, cruise ships can't actually dock in Santorini, so you have to get a tender or small boat from your cruise ship to the island itself. You'll get dropped off at what's known as the Old Port, at the foothills of a cliff leading to Thera, which is the main town on the island. But, you've got to somehow get up to Thera. Okay, so when you get to uh, Santorini, you've got to get from the Old Port up to Thera itself, which is like the main town. Um, but there's a few ways you can do this. You can get the cable car, which is what the sensible people do. Uh, if you're a bit kind of uh, conceited in nature like me, and you want to kind of prove that you can do everything, then you can walk up the hill. But if you're going to do that, just make sure that you've got a decent fitness level, because in the heat, it is pretty difficult. You can also get a donkey, which I think is a bit out of order. Um, I'm not fair on the donkeys themselves. If you can't walk up it, why is the, the donkey? But yeah, so if you are going to, going to climb up, just make sure that you've got some water. Uh, and yeah, it might be a bit tiring. Anyway, let's go. So once you've queued for the cable car or walked the uh, many steps up to the top, big round of applause here if you manage this by the way, you're greeted to Thera, the island's main town. It's full of lots of narrow streets, plenty of bars and restaurants, souvenir shops, and it can get very busy, especially in the summertime where there'll likely be a number of cruise ships in the bay. So this is the view from up top, and as you can see, it is absolutely stunning. So when you do make it up to the top of the, uh, the kind of hill, if you want to call it that, um, then yeah, you get some stunning views. So it is worth the climb or the cable car or whichever way you want to get up it. Um, but yeah, it is really, really good. There's plenty of bars here, restaurants to chill out in. It's a bit touristy, but you know, it's you can understand why, because it is such a beautiful place too. But yeah, but check out the view, really, really good. So that evening after leaving Santorini, I had a chilled night on board and grabbed some food in the Mediterranean restaurant which serves a range of pizzas and pasta dishes to order which are really tasty. And after that I went to the theatre to check out one of the shows. Good morning. 
morning. Okay, so it's a brand new day and a brand new destination. Welcome to Rhodes. The next destination on the trip was Rhodes Town on the island of Rhodes, or Rhodos if you want to sound like a local. Rose Town is a fairly large place, packed with tourists, but also away from the souvenir shops, there's a the bustling town where you can find lots of Greek shops with a less touristic vibe. One of the main visitor attractions is the Grandmaster Palace, a medieval castle in the centre of the city. The palace is a beautiful piece of architecture and has a central courtyard surrounded by many galleries. There's a whole host of features too, including many mosaics on the floor, as well as artefacts and statues. After catching up on a bit of local history, I grabbed some food in one of the restaurants in town and it had to be a Greek salad, my favourite dish on a hot day, delicious. I had a relaxed day afterwards walking around the town and there's lots of souvenir shops but away from them there's lots of pleasant bars too and the town had a very nice vibe to it, I liked it. Good evening, okay so I've rested up after my day in Rose today and I'm going to go and try out one of the speciality restaurants on board the ship. There's a few of them to choose from, but today I'm going to do things a little bit differently and I'm going to try Umi Sushi and see what that has to offer. So let's go and take a look. I had a lot of Asian food in my time and I must say this was really good. It's not exactly authentic and it is prepared with more of a British palate in mind, but even so it was delicious. The meal started with an amuse-bouche, followed by a selection of dumplings and the main event, the sushi, which was a variety of sushi made from fish as well as meat options and veggie too. And to finish off the meal, a trio of desserts. This place I would highly recommend and the restaurant had impeccable service. The next day I woke up to Mykonos, a very popular destination and similar to Santorini, one of the famed Greek islands should I say? I ventured into Mykonos town after catching a tender from the ship and explored some of the narrow streets as well as the famous Little Venice as it's known. Mykonos is one of the most expensive Greek islands so be careful in some of the bars and restaurants here. Always check the menu first before ordering a drink. It can also be packed and can feel pretty hectic especially in some of the narrow streets and alleyways which are full of small shops and designer boutiques. The town itself is nice and a good place to wander around for a few hours or so but I've got to say, I've been to other Greek islands in the past which have similar narrow streets and are just as pretty. After a few hours of Mykonos town, it was back to the tender and back to the ship. Hello, okay, so I am back in my cabin after a day out in Mykonos. If I'm honest with you, I'm not 100% certain about Mykonos. Everybody seems to, well not everybody, but a lot of people seem to go on about Mykonos like it's some amazing place and it's the best place in the world ever. Personally, I don't really feel it. Don't get me wrong, it's it's nice, it's okay to look at, I'm not dissing it, but I think it's overhyped personally. I don't know, maybe you agree, maybe you don't, but I'm not too sure, but um, I know I've been there today, it was good. Okay, took around the place and to kind of get a feel for the town, uh, but yeah, maybe not my most favourite place in Greece and certainly not Europe anyway, but yeah, each to their own as it were. Um, one thing I've found too from the Greek islands so far, which we've been to, especially on this itinerary, anyway, is that a lot of the places are quite samey. So when I think of Santorini, Mykonos today and Rhodes yesterday, they're all kind of tourist towns when you kind of get to port. Um, I think if I was going to do the Greek islands again, I think I'd rather kind of include maybe a stop in Athens too just to give it a bit more culture, a bit more history, a bit more of a change, a bigger kind of city and place to kind of visit to. So if you are going to do a Greek island cruise and you're interested, just bear in mind that a lot of these places are all very, very nice, but they're a little bit similar to each other in some ways. So you maybe think about that if you are going to choose a Greek cruise, maybe think of it, an itinerary which is maybe a little bit more varied. Uh, but yeah, very nice places, just a little bit samey, so just bear that in mind too. Anyway, I am going to go and have a shower because I'm a little bit sweaty from today, not very nice. 
uh, and then I'm gonna go and grab some food too. So um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go and shower, and I'll catch you guys in a bit. So after a nice relaxing shower, I headed to Aperitif, the champagne and wine bar on board for, well, obviously an Aperitif before dinner, which tonight was in the Italian part of the main restaurant. And again, the food was great, this time with a pasta dish finished off at the table. After that, the drink started flowing with a few in the lounge bar before heading upstairs to one of Morella Cruz's notorious silent discos. I wasn't expecting much from the silent disco, but I've got to say it was a really fun night and a great time. The next day, and with a slightly sore head, we arrived at another Greek island, Crete, and more specifically, Hania. Hania was a place I absolutely loved, from its remarkable waterfront to its back streets with small bars and restaurants. The architecture of Hania is also distinctly different from the other Greek islands so far, with more of an Italian style, similar to Corfu in some ways, but yeah, a beautiful place. So this is Hania, uh, which is pretty cosmopolitan. I'm liking it, it's really, really cool. The waterfront is beautiful, and it feels uh, much better than Mykonos did yesterday. So personally, yeah, if you come to the Greek islands, make sure Hania is on your itinerary because it is a beautiful place. Away from the waterfront, there are lots of back streets to explore with local shops, as well as places to grab a bite to eat and a drink. There's also lots of local produce on offer. There's also more of a newer town too, which you can explore with wider streets, bigger shops, and much more of a city offering. So if you're wondering what a cabin is like on board the Morella Explorer, um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of a tour around my cabin so I can show you what it's like. So this is a um, outside cabin for two people, but it's the same as the single occupancy cabins too. But to give you a bit of an idea of what you can expect on board. So we start off with obviously a bed. So here you go, which is a good size. There you go. You've got loads of drawer space either side of the bed. Um, you've also got Loads of storage space in here, so you've got storage here. Uh, you've also got lots of wardrobes around here too as well, which are massive. You also get a little mini bar fridge um, in here, which I think is okay. Yeah, I've got some water in there which I had to squeeze in, but yeah, gives you an idea of what's what. Um, and as well as that, over here you get a little bit of a seat and a bit of a kind of desk. You get um, tea and coffee making facilities. Again, it's British ship, um, which is pretty good. Um, if you're on the premium package too, you get a bottle of water in your cabin each day, which is what I'm on. You've got a, a TV and plenty of storage space. And also in the bathroom too, you've also got a, a good size shower. You've also got a toilet, obviously, a sink, and again, plenty of storage space too. But the bathroom, so the, the shower room, rather, is actually pretty, pretty good. The balcony cabins are the same size as this one, apart from you have a balcony. Um, for what I know, the bed is the other way around and you have the balcony where your window is but apart from that it's exactly the same the suites obviously are a bit bigger um but yeah but it's nice it's even though it's a, a this ship is, was built in the 90s it's been refurbished a bit since then but the cabin is good it's a decent size um and i like it it's good compared to the discovery which was on a few years ago i actually prefer this cabin than the one on the discovery it just seems a bit nicer too but um personal taste and all that so you may think differently too but yeah cabins above the morale explorer are good so it was the last day of the cruise and the final location was the small town of Katakolon, not technically a Greek island either being situated on the mainland of Greece. This place seemed to be created just for cruise ships as a port they could get coach ships to Mount Olympia, home of the Olympics, otherwise there wasn't much to see. Catacolon, 
Um, it's a very small place, there's not much happening, there's a few shops and a few, and a few bars, but it's nice to kind of stretch your legs. You can also go and visit um, Olympus from here too, so it's quite a lot of coach trips to go to, but yeah, it's not the most amazing place in the world, but it is very nice, uh, but just a bit on the small side. So it was the last night of the cruise. I had an early flight back the next day, so it was gonna be a quiet one, but I grabbed some food in the tapas side of the Mediterranean restaurant and had a couple of drinks on the deck outside before heading to bed. Now, my final thoughts on the cruise. Well, Morella Cruises still offer a great product in terms of what you get for the price with all your drinks included, tips, as well as flights and transfers. The Morella Explorer 2 was very good. It had a fairly relaxed ambience on board and a nice decor. Not a massive ship, but plenty if you wanted a chill holiday for a week, I'd say. In terms of the Greek islands, there are plenty of cruises to choose from or go into different places, but I'd say to pick your itinerary carefully, and as I said earlier in the video, a few of the places on this cruise were a little bit similar. Athens would be good to throw into the mix, and maybe an island which isn't as popular with tourists either, but Greece is a lovely place and you'll definitely have an amazing time. That's it from me, please give me a like if you enjoyed the video, it's great when people do that as I get feedback on the videos that I'm creating, and if you really like my content, please subscribe too. Anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.